The size eight Gary Scott. Now, and it's a feather winged version. Thread. We start off with a light coloured thread. And this is just white. This is just to help keep, basically the yellow part, of the the body a wee bit lighter, so there's no dark thread round about it. So we've got a size eight. This is the black spay by Ken Sawada. Yeah. And we just simply start with thread at the the iron, put down a layer of thread. Now, as we come down, I'm going to tie in some holographic tinsel for the tag. This is gold holographic tinsel from UTC in a medium size. Let's just work our way down. Now you could stop the fly or the thread in line with the point. I'm just going to take it just a wee tad further, say midway between the point and the barb. And then, what I'm going to do, put some tiny bit of super glue on the, th on the hook at this point here. And then wind the, oh, the holographic tinsel down, forming the tag and then coming back up over the super glue, which basically keeps it really nice and strong. Two or three turns to hold. Now, I'm going to use the cut end of this as a measure. See the yellow part right there? This is where the yellow floss is going to come to here. Now, I'm going to tie in the tails. The tails is golden pheasant crest. It's a hot orange, dyed hot orange, and a, a natural or a dyed sunburst. Now, the orange is underneath, the yellow on top. You can have them both the same length, or the yellow slightly shorter, it's up to yourself. Length, basically at least half the body length over the back. You'll get a preference to the way you like it. I'm tying both on at the same time. Just see how they're sitting. You can manoeuvre them around at this point, make sure that the yellow's on top. Now what I'm going to do here is basically tidy up this area. Trim this the full length of the body. Basically what I'm doing here is keeping everything nice and level and at the same time this will help taper the body if I need to. And then I'm going to come back down. And the way back down I'm going to tie in a, a medium tinsel. This is a gold tinsel. I'm just going to make sure there's wax on the thread. Because this has a tinsel and it will cut your thread. If you don't want to use the tinsel then just basically use an oval tinsel. Uh, just work your way down. Now, save bulk, what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to tie in, this is a stout, this is silk floss, this is a yellow, 155. Just run it through your fingers, this will sort of basically flatten the floss a wee bit. And then I'm going to tie it in, just to this point here, and wind it right down until I get it in line with the tail, just to there. Now, just again, to run the floss through your fingers, just slightly flatten it out, bring your thread up to the point where you're going to catch it in, just, just there, and then we can slightly open out these the floss as we wind, and then form the first part of the body, there we go, again we cut this a full length of the, the body itself. Just making sure again that it's tape on and it's well tied in. Now before I do anything I'm going to make sure this is tied in. Quickly run the thread up. Just making sure it stays, doesn't roll round the hook. You can just tap it with a finger and come over to a turn quite quick. Now give yourself plenty of space up here for your hackles. And then we wind back down ready for our dubbing. Now the dubbing basically is just some fur, a golden yellow, just a, it's a possum, 
And I'm just basically taking out some of the fluff because I want this nice colour to be in, in the body just to take it back a bit. Just a, a nice traditional colour, not too bright. I'm just going to dub it onto the thread. I think I'm going to see that. It's quite easy to dub on. Just work my way up. And then we taper by just controlling the dubbing as we wind up. Just stretching out when we need to stretch out. I mean, allow it to actually come away from the actual... as you wind away from the, the thread, so you get a, like a hackly type effect. Up to this point here. Take away the excess, I'm just going to tidy up this area. Draw back anything going forward with the thread. That basically tidies it up. As you can see, you've got a slight taper. And then bring up your gold tinsel up through. This point here, be careful because the tinsel will cut your thread. Again, make sure you have a wee bit of wax on your thread. It does help. And then you can bend and break away tinsel, saves your scissors and tidy that area up. Now what I'm going to use is get some velcro and then basically just bring out some of the fur. Just be careful with your thread you don't catch it. I'm just going to roll my fingers round the shank just to draw back these fibres. They are sitting slightly out. They will sit back nice when they've been fished. If you think maybe they're too much, you can pull some of them off. The more it wears, the better it looks, I think, half the time. It's a wee tad, that's a wee tad long, so I'll just roll it back. Now we're ready for our hackle. Now the hackle but this is a, a white eared pheasant dyed hot orange or flame really is good. what it is, it's a hot orange dye with a touch more red in it. As you can see here, well I've got a hackle here and it's, I've used half the side for the first fly and now the other side I'm going to use for this fly here. It's quite simple, all you do is bring the, the fibres out from the stem, tear them away and then we can roll them round. So the length is up to yourself. The length, you want it by the hook, is just basically what I do. Is you're there seeing the underside, get the length you want, and then encourage these fibres to roll round. I'll keep my fingers out of the way so you can see. As you just take your time and encourage the fibres to come round the shank, and then you can tighten up when you're happy. And there we are. Quite easy to do. And the, the double will help hold this out. Trim away your excess. Now what I'm going to do is change my thread colour as well. I'm going to change the black. Before I do that, just make sure there's nothing going forward towards the eye. That area is tidy and then a bit of wax onto your thread. Just come up ready for your black thread. And it's just a uni thread in black. The white's a uni thread as well and both are 8 -0. Just run my thread up to this point here. Cut away the base piece of the black and the white thread. And there, that's that. Just ready, just move it back. Now we're ready for basically a wee bit of modern touch. I'm going to add some, this is polar bear dyed uh, sunburst. Just a few fibres, just a wee highlighter underneath. Which really lifts the fly. I'm just going to line up the ends a wee bit. Just towards the end of the tail. That's plenty. Just going to quickly two or three turns in to make sure it's nice and tight. Trim away the excess. Just got to make sure you have the wax on your thread. I'll tidy up these cut ends in a second. But before I do that, I'm going to tie in some, again it's another part of the underwing. Now you could put these jungle cock feathers on 
after the wing are decided, the wing is up to yourself, but I'll put them on first. Now, what I'm going to do is just get to the line them up. You're seeing the underside. I want the ends to come towards the end of the body. So it's just about there. And then we can pull out the fibres and then tie them on. Basically, just slightly onto the side. So I'm putting both on together. Just come round. Uh, like two or three turns just to get it started, just to see the set of the distance and the size and the length. Now, that's just slightly too long, so it's quite easy just to go back, take it forward. Again, two or three turns. Just to position the wing. Anyway, that's a bit better. That's that looks much better, that's it. And once you're happy, then you can, can carry on. You, you can fold these back, which I'm going to do, which will make sure they don't get pulled out. It means uh, they have to break off, but I'm going to take the thread to the eye and then come back up. Make sure, again, you get wax on your thread. Put down a nice layer of thread for, your, for tying in your wing and your hackle. Now, the front hackle of this is the same. It's a white-eared pheasant, but in this case, it's dyed. There we are, the nice blue, it's kind of like kingfisher blue. Just there have a small feather. Now this one I'm going to wind. So I'm just going to take away the fluff, quite easy, just pull it out. Tie it in by the tip, just reveal the tip. Drawing the fibres back. And there we are. Just catch it on the side. I'm just going to make sure there's wax on my thread. Now I'm going to couple of turns down and fold back the tip and come back up. Better, I'll use a small or a light pair of hackle pliers. There we are. And then you can draw back the fibres. Now you're going to get, use up the whole feather. Just, you'll maybe get a couple of turns or so. There's one. You come into the second, just come up against your thread. Put a 90 degree bend into the thread, into the stem. Carry on down towards the eye, making sure it's tied in. It's all the way down. And then what we can do is we can break off the stem quite easy. Now what will happen is you'll get a nice neat cut if you do that. Just draw back these fibres, tidy the head area up again. And just pull the fibres to get them to sit where you want. There we are, that looks okay. Yeah, it's sitting nice. Once this goes in the water, it swims. It's now, well. I've got the, this is the, the peacock quills. And uh, basically we're the right and the left side. So, And we don't need a big slip, meaning maybe around about 4 mil or so. Just trim one off so you don't need it too big. That's my side, same on the other side. Now you're looking for the tips of the wings to come to the end of the tail. You can go short, shorter if you want. Bring it towards the end of the, the tail. Now, just checking that they're both the same thickness. So, look about right. I think I've won too many in my side, so I'm just going to take it out. It's the point of the scissors. We can take it away. Just come in and Right, basically yeah. flat on the top. I'll show you. I'll come around with just a couple of loose turns. Okay, so there's three turns. Just to position the wing. See where it's sitting. Now, if you want it slightly lower, you have to... I mean, I feel that sits, that's sitting okay. But, I mean, if you want it lower, you can position them again. You can bring them round. Yeah, I will do that. I'll just slightly bring them onto the side. Now, I'm just using the loose turns. You see what I'm doing? Nothing special. I'm not fighting with the material. Just allowing the, the weight of the bobbin to hold. Now I'm going to come in with two or three more turns. And making sure it stays where I want. Trim away the excess. Sometimes it sits nice. There is times it just doesn't want to sit. And those days, uh, you just kind of maybe go and have a cup of tea or something and come back. That's what I do. 
then look for your foot finishing tool come in and then I'm going to highlight the top part of the head with some fluorescent thread or floss this, this is glow bright number four it's a, a nice red now I'm going to just halfway up let's come in two or three turns trim away the, the waist part and a couple of turns just to tidy up and then we whip finish just be careful you only need a couple of turns to whip finish and then make sure you get scissors in trim away just watching my feathers here on my hackle you can see the wing how it sits now what I'm going to do here I'm going to super glue and I'm going to speed the process up a wee bit by drying it with a hair dryer we'll see what happens dries really quick and then I can varnish it so get yourself a, a hair dryer that's the ice cream van as you probably hear, he always comes by when I'm filming but anyway, here we go Try the super glue, you'll see it drying, it dries really quick. Usually what happens when it dries quick like this, it, it means that the that it doesn't soak too far into this red and keeps it really bright. And uh, let's see how it's in. That looks okay. And then you varnish just all the way around. Take your time. And that's it. Now, you could basically, because of the super glue drying so quick, coat a varnish on it. That's exactly it. That's it done. But I usually have another coat after that. <laughs>